Hello and welcome to O-Worm. Today we'll be taking a look at the anatomy of the lizard. Lizards are part of a larger group of animals called reptiles. Reptiles, unlike amphibians, are adapted for living and reproducing on land. While some species spend some time in water, most species spend the majority of their time on land. Some other species of reptiles include turtles, snakes, crocodiles, and alligators. This lizard in particular is called an anole lizard, commonly found throughout the southern United States. I live in New York, but I've been to Florida a couple times, and these lizards are everywhere. So let's take a look at the external anatomy. So notice how the skin of the lizard feels. Reptilian skin is dry, thick, and waterproof, which protects the body from drying out even in very dry weather. You can also see that the skin is covered by tough scales, which serve to protect the animal from injury. Anole lizards can also change the color of their skin from green to brown to gray. So you can see that this one is gray. And this color depends on many factors, such as light intensity, temperature, and the stress level of the animal. So now we can see if we have a male or a female lizard. So a male anole lizard would have a brightly colored membrane under the neck around here called a dewlap. The dewlap signals a male's possession of a territory and also serves to attract females for mating. So this one you might see a slight reddish flush, but this is a lot smaller, so this lizard is female. Now we'll look at the head of the anole. Like most lizards, the anole is equipped with movable eyelids. So right here, you can see these eyelids can move, and they open and close. However, there are some exceptions. For example, the eyelids of geckos are fused open and immobile. To keep their eyes clean, geckos wash them frequently with their long tongues. Now, here are the external ear openings, which leads into the inner ear. Lizards use their ears for hearing and balance, just like us. If I put my probe in through here, it's going to hit the tympanic membrane. So this resistance means that I'm hitting the tympanic membrane, which is also called the eardrum. Okay, so if I twist the lizard, you can see the external nostrils. I'll see if I can point to it. So there's one here, and there's another one right there. So the lizard uses these nostrils to smell and breathe. Interestingly, lizards breathe mostly through their nostrils unless they're running, which is when they switch to breathing 70% through the nose and 30% through the mouth. Speaking of the mouth, here it is. Now when I open it up, like that, you can see numerous small, sharp, and pointed teeth along the edges that allow these lizards to efficiently grab their prey. And in the middle, this muscular structure you see is the tongue. And when you look at the upper side of the mouth, these two triangular holes at the top are openings to the eustachian tubes, and these lead into the inner ear. Moving down, here's the cloaca, right here which is the exit for both the digestive and urogenital systems. And here you can see its tail. So all of this. And this slender tail breaks off at the slightest pressure to allow for a quick escape from predators. The tail then grows back over several weeks. Now when I look at the limbs, right here, they're not really visible, but on each of the lizard's limbs, it has adhesive toe pads. These sticky pads help the lizards climb and cling to vertical surfaces like walls or trees. Now let's take a look at the internal anatomy. Lay the lizard down with the ventral side facing up, then pin each of the four limbs to the dissection tray. Now cut up the lizard's body with scissors, making sure to keep the blade angled up so that we don't damage the internal structures. Now 
now lift back the skin and pin the flaps down. Okay, so this large grayish colored organ right here, covering most of the body cavity, is the liver. The liver has multiple lobes and is the largest organ in the lizard's body. Now the liver is the ultimate multitasker. It produces bile, stores and releases glucose, detoxifies blood, etc, etc. And below this liver is a greenish sac. You can see it right there. And the sac is called the gallbladder, which stores the bile that the liver produces. Now above the liver, right here, is the heart. I'm going to lift it up. So this is the heart. Except for crocodiles, which have a four-chambered heart, all reptiles, including lizards, have a three-chambered heart. This means that it has two atria, but only one ventricle. The disadvantage of this system is that oxygenated and deoxygenated blood can mix, which reduces the efficiency. So in humans and other mammals, the heart has four chambers, which allows for complete separation of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood. Now here on either side of the heart are the lungs. So there's one here and another one right here. So unlike amphibians, who can breathe through both their skin and their lungs, lizards, like all reptiles, can only breathe with their lungs. Now down here, this large sac-like organ, this one, is the stomach, which stores and digests food. And after that, the food passes down into the small intestine, which is right here all of these coils so all of this is the small intestine and the small intestine functions in absorbing nutrients from the lizard's food so i'll try to unravel some of the small intestine so you can see better oh and the small intestine also has scaffolding to keep it in place like you can see here so this thin film and this is called the mesentery tissue So after the small intestine, the food enters the large intestine, which is this brown structure here, which is also called the colon. This is where excess water from the food is absorbed and feces is made and stored until it can be eliminated via the cloaca, which we saw earlier. As I move these structures aside, you can see the kidneys. So here's a kidney right here. And on the other side, there's another kidney. And the kidneys filter blood to produce urine. Now, the urine then passes down to right here, which is the urinary bladder. So this thing. The bladder then stores the urine until it's ready to be eliminated, also via the cloaca, which is right here. Now let's look for the reproductive organs, also called the gonads. So right here, this dark oval structure is an ovary, and there should be another one on the other side, but it's harder to see. So here are the gonads, and in this case the lizard is female, so these are the two ovaries. Fertilization happens internally in lizards within the cloaca and fertilized eggs also leave the female's body through the cloaca. Now if I move aside all the organs, we might be able to see the spine along the dorsal side. So right there, that's the spine. And lizards are vertebrates, so they have this spine here which provides support and protects the spinal cord that runs inside of it. I, that's the end of the lizard dissection. 
Thanks for staying, folks. Here's a fun fact about lizards to send you on your way. Male and old lizards are so strongly territorial that they've even been witness fighting their own reflection in mirrors. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more.